Hey, it's Noir Nerd, and uh, this is going to be the uh, first, probably in two videos, of uh, talking about this like uh, Pac Man, 3D Pac Man project I wanted to create. Uh, because, well, actually, somebody emailed me, they'd seen some of my uh, maze videos on. Uh, I think it was the one where you create a random maze using an A-frame component called uh, the A-frame maze component to turn into a random maze. Somebody asked me, because I mentioned in that um, tutorial about you could probably create some sort of Pac-Man game with it. Um, so uh, they sort of asked me if I could do that or expand on it, so uh, I've decided to do that. I've been playing around with that for a few hours over the last week and I thought I'd just present some progress and some thoughts on how it's going and just talk basically about um, uh, what, what is going on. So I'm sort of like, it's sort of in a half complete stage at the moment, the, the game itself, so things I've got working is uh, I've got a Pac-Man Pac character that you can move around, it's just a sphere, yellow sphere. And just, I've got the colours from the uh, online, I've found the colours. Uh, also, uh, the basic colours for the maze is right. Um, I've added some sort of coins, it needs, needs a bit of work, but still. But, uh, Added some coins and the like, enemies who just again not really don't really like ghost or like ghost model or anything just uh, spheres with the colours from the game and there are still some game actual mechanics to work out so uh, in terms of things that work swallowing coins works um, movement works there's a basic um, movement for the enemies that needs improving so the ghosts. Do have um, some code that allows them to follow the player, uh, but it needs improving because they're not really. It's not really the same as the game. Or it's a bit strange. They're not like in the game. I think you have sort of like a random movement, and if they see that another player, they chase them or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I need to research it again. But uh, yeah, and all coins. If coin following works, um, the enemies. There's no routine for killing the player though, I've sort of got to comment on that really. But uh, I guess I don't want to waste too much time. We'll just open up the code and I'll talk a little bit also about the process of um, going through like oh, step by step I suppose. So, first off, we've got the HTML file. I'll just talk about this a bit. So, we've got um, just a generic HTML file. We're using a few different A frame libraries, obviously, A frame itself, unified. Um, a frame extras is also used. And A frame uh, maze component, which is what generates the means. And also, physics system. We need physics in there because. You don't want to be able to go through walls, so that's in there. Um, JST, I think I mentioned. I think that should be there. And then main JS, which is just my custom JavaScript, which I'm using to create the um, game logic, really. So that's all that's all this section here. And then we've got some more audio because there's different audio. Um, so there's the audio tag of an ID and then the source, which links to the source of the sounds. Uh, and then physics, you've got the physics attribute, which is debug false, but you can turn it on to true. So uh, true, debug true and false. So true is useful from the debug. You can just see the bounding box for each for the physics, uh, which helps with debugging collisions, but I'm going to set to false because I'm not, I'm not debugging that particular aspect at the minute. We have the assets, 
Um, so in a phrase made something, I won't go over that again. There's a separate video where I talk about the generating the maze, but uh, basically in a nutshell, that entity is for the walls is defined here. So the texture wall is in a folder called the images wall, which is the texture, the blue texture, and then the floor is just the texture floor. Um, then you have a cylinder which is just made black. You've got different heights and width and stuff. And the sky is just set to black as well. So the entity is a hyphen sky. Yeah. Then we've got a camera with look controls. I've positioned it so that it's uh, above the because I don't, I don't want to make it, so it's not like in the other example where it's a first person, it's actually above and then it's, well, actually technically it's above and then rotated around 270 degrees. It's just the image is there, rotated and then positions up. Uh, yeah. And then we've got a, this is our little characters, then we've got the comments, is Pac-Man. So it's a sphere. Universal controls and kinematic body, which is for the physics, uh, which is which, and then class for the Pac Man for identifying the, the, the JavaScript name JS. And then we've got a bunch of ghosts positioned with the positions defined there, blah blah blah, different colors. And then coins, so coins is a real weird one I think I need to improve the method I mean I definitely need to definitely improve it because the way I did it was just going to the inspector and just move it around it took ages actually so there's like tons of coins uh, I think a better way to do this probably would be to be everywhere there is a wall generate uh, one or two coins nearby but I wasn't exactly sure they should obviously involve doing it dynamically with GS but I've just done a minute I've just um, <laughs> which is a very laborious way of doing it is just added the coins manually and it's not really perfect because it can, they can fall out of line with it some, somewhat um, and I need to add some interface stuff as well so let's just look a bit at the actual javascript in this maybe um, let's just let's look at that the javascript which is the in progress sort of JavaScript you're writing in a minute. Oh, come on. Oh, what is this? Come on. Okay. So, I've not really created a great deal of game logic so far. I've created some variables for the score, and the score is still a work in progress. The user interface stuff has been added. Pac-Man attack is just a boolean, which is like a true or false, it's just to, uh, I don't know if one or two states, um, just to determine if the Pac-Man's eaten a big um, coin, basically. Um, and this is something I'm working on still, which is the color switching, which doesn't work for it. Uh, this doesn't work for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but I need to work that. It's just a count, coin count, because I need to be able to count. Later on, I'll be able to need to be able to count the amount of coins that are in the game, because once it's zero, you've won, so that's it. Uh, make large is just a function that I created for um, when Pac Man has picked up a, uh, the attack phase of his. So when he picks up a large coin, I mean, so he can kill the ghosts. Um, the ghosts don't respawn yet, but basically uh, it means he can, so what's happening here? So 10 second delay, he's just say 10, let's see. I think it's 10,000 10, milliseconds. Um, Pac-Man track is then set to true because it's this, and then we've got a set, set timeout, which means it times out after a certain amount of time, which is this variable here, and then just switches it around again, basically. So it's very basic at the minute, but uh, one of them, let's go further down. The code, the code's like, like I said, I'm still working on this thing, so it's still a bit like hacky and in progress. 
So we've got the register components for the different, for Ghost and also for Pac-Man. Um, push listen, so they've got uh, collision events list they listen for and also tick events, which are like events that occur every second. Also, I think it is, I think it's every second. So in it function, um, we have an event listener for collision events on Ghost. So if the class name of the this is this is all I don't even know if this is working properly yet, but I was just seeing if I could make it so that if it hits the wall it goes back to position X and Z. I don't know if it's working right. Say the ghost, it bumps into another ghost, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. The main thing is Pac-Man. So th this is some little adding I'm gonna add here, but basically just if the detailed class name equals Pac-Man, it's got a class in the Pac-Man, then it'll reset the life. And like get rid of the pipeline and destroy the model. And then I haven't need to add all the routine for re adding it in a minute. Most of what's going on here is the movement. So we've got a tick function which runs every second, I think. Um, we get the disk element that is position. We get its target. So we've got target and we need to find up here. So if you go query select a target. Which I think there must be an ID on Pac-Man, which makes it target. I think it must be. Um, target position. So you got, it gets the basically gets the position of the target clone. It gets cloned with it, and then um, this is what I'm trying to work out of getting the original. I can get the original color, but the only problem at the minute is that it. It doesn't actually change back, but it's by the by. I don't want to. I know I'm trying to explain a lot of it. Like I said, this is like prototypal code, so it's very model still. And I'm still figuring stuff out. Uh, but the main actual movement is occurring here. Also, you have to add this. This is something that's really required. So, uh, this element components dynamic body enough to sync to physics. This just took me a while to figure out, otherwise, it wouldn't move. Uh, so the ghosts have a dynamic body um, movement, dyna the dynamic bodies in, in the physics system for a frame. And if I didn't add that sync to physics thing, it would not work. So that is definitely required to add there. Um, this is this is really bad. So I'm trying to work this a different way of doing this, but in the, this is still in a tick function right and I'm just checking for if it's the original colour still on and setting the original if you're setting the colour to blue if the attack mode is on and or setting it to just the not original colour which is wrong this doesn't work but I, 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 I'm trying to work that out in a so Pac-Man says the coin eating so we're in the collision event listener coin eating is uh, there so we've got score plus plus which just basically increments the score above and then it moves the because uh, so the coins are uh, a sphere, the actual entity of it. So it, um, yeah, it just removes that. That's what this does. It's taking the duck and cruise so letter a sphere, move child, and then that increases the score. And same for coin large, just basically the same. And then make large because you're eating the large coin, which then initiates the attack mode. And then ghost. <sighs> Uh, that's for eating the ghost basically, so you just eat the ghost. So what does this all look like in, in actual practice? There's some bugs like this bug of main on the main bugs is actually the sometimes the, the characters just seem to go off and fly off into <laughs> nothingness, it's weird. Yeah, sometimes this seems to happen as well, they seem to bunch around me. Even though they're not the position they should be. Unless I restart it, so that's a bit odd. So so yeah, this is extremely like, I mean, hopefully I'm going to be able to get a good tutorial of this done. So what sound, you go, you, um, you know, in the shapes, the attack mode, and you can see that there's a certain distance where they will, they will follow you know, the pattern character, but uh, nothing actually happens when, and the, the coloring switching doesn't back, doesn't work, so 
it's still very buggy and there's still lots of stuff to work out. Also, uh, because it's like a randomly generated maze, I'm going to have to probably think about this. There's going to be, have to be some sort of difference to the Patline game because the Patline game is actually a much more open maze. It's not like this, which is got a beginning and an end, I suppose. It's like, um, I have to exactly find the words to describe it, but basically, the, the, the I guess the sort of um, layout of the actual map is different because if you, if you notice each um, each time I'm generating a new maze it's actually generating slightly different variations in the maze pattern which is a, uh, which is the quality of the um, maze component it's what it's meant to do it's meant to generate a random maze of a certain size which is 10 by 10 in this case uh, but the problem with that is that it's not exactly the same as it would be on Pac-Man. I don't think there's any way to change it. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll have to change the gameplay somehow. I mean, it's not exactly the same because we don't have that central area there as well. But um, it's an interesting challenge, definitely. It's, yeah. it's, it's always interesting to replicate arcade games and JavaScript. You can also move the camera around by this as well if you really want to. You can just click and drag it. So, yeah, I guess it's like part one of this uh, Pac Man experiment adventure in Ray 3 and JavaScript. Uh, I've still got more to do. I mean, it remains to be seen with arts. And, you know, this is basically just an experimental project because somebody requests me to do a tutorial on this game. I thought I'd do a vlog on it first, just to, just to show the process, like, of, of creating um, one of these, like, because whenever I do a tutorial, usually I create a uh, prototype first, because I don't want to go into tutorials just blind, not knowing what I'm doing, because it's just very embarrassing, and it's not even useful for anybody. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's sort of starting to come together now, I just need to find the world for the, the finishing line on it really and tidy bits up. Uh, one very important thing to note actually, so like I was saying about the coins earlier on, so if you go into uh, control, press control alt and I, and this is something that's really useful for reframe development, you get the visual inspector and then you can just like inspect positions, rotation, scale, etc, etc, attributes of each, which is just really is essential. Because then you can, I can use this and I can replicate those um, those values in the actual HTML. So, for example, with Pac-Man, got to move in here. Maybe I could just change the movement to the uh, for position to two. So X Y Z minus my two point two two nine on the X axis, zero point five on the Y and minus ten on the Z. And, uh, I just know these positions now. I can change the ten. And, Anything really, and then you can also really do this. Um, yeah, so obviously, um, I've just tried to touch the surface of what I've been doing. I've recorded the whole lot of this already, and I will see it here. But, um, watch probably the part there will be a part two or just a tutorial. We're going to figure it out fast enough, I guess. Um, it's been sort of fun to do. Like I said, it's always fun to do arcade projects because it's a fun way of trying to uh, work a problem out of this with gamification, I suppose. Anyway, that's that. Have a nerd, nerd, like and subscribe. Uh, buy me a coffee if you want. I've just implemented, I've just created a buy me a coffee page um, on buymeacoffee.com. Uh, the links below so if you like the videos obviously like and subscribe it's always really good helps with the algorithm or just send me some money like a one uh, two pounds if you really if you really want but don't feel pressured to all right that's that bye